I am Sister Monica Awino Omondi, Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph Asumbi. I'm here at Tigaton University doing my PhD in horticulture under the project of Insight's Food Project. And I'm working on these vegetables. I have worked on with the African nightshade, amaranthus, cowpeas, together with the uh, fish manure and the black soldier fly manure, looking at how these vegetables respond to the different types of these two manure and how beneficial they are to us and to the farmers. How, how do this, uh, how do fish manure and uh, black soldier fly, when we plant vegetables, which one responds faster and how, how are they nutritionally or when you look at the leaves, how healthy they are. That's what I'm trying to find behind me here. And we are looking at them and we have seen that both manures are good, but only that they respond differently. You find that fish manure responds faster and black soldier fly also responds, but takes time because it has to, uh, to take time because it's an organic manure, so it's, it does not respond immediately once you plant the plants. My PhD is all about looking at the effects of the manure that I've mentioned on these indigenous vegetables. And I looked at the African indigenous vegetables because of their nutritional value and how we can use them uh, when we are in the village or we are in the urban areas. Like my structure of the box that I'm using here with the container down, it can be used in the urban areas and in small spaces where we don't have enough spaces to produce vegetables and have them in urban so that the vegetables we may not transplant from far, transport from far to come and use them in the urban areas. So it is something that can be used secular economy that can be taken to the urban areas for food security. And yes, we also interact with farmers who are in the project and are also doing the same work. They have found it very interesting to use this manure, organic manure, because the vegetable stays fresh for a long time when they are in the farm, when they compare with the other production. But we have not done much. We are still going on with the research. So when we get the findings, we'll give them more detail on that. These vegetables, what I've learned that they can grow in a soilless uh, a media, like the way I'm using here, pumice, they are just the stones that we bring and they plant the plants. It was very unique and that I can just have a box made a simple structure and the plants can grow and do very well. And the production also, when you look at it, the production is good as well as you can find sometimes you get more than what you produce in the soil. And look at the area that I'm using and also the, the plants that are behind me. Dr. Karanja Bernard, a team member in Insitis. I just as we have covered quite a number of activities done here. This section is for where we prepare, this is our growth bed, and we have the deep water where we use water to grow a plant. That means we just get water from the fish containing the nutrients, then they suspend them using these uh, boards where you just suspend the plants inside here, then you fill this place with water. That means this is pure hydroponic. When you want to produce your vegetable using hydroponic water from the fish. This is a deep water system whereby you suspend plants in water containing nutrients. This is a system we call hydroponic. Just like these forms, uh, we suspend our plants using uh, hydroponic whereby you suspend your plants in a, a liquid media basically water which contain nutrients. What you need, you only need in a plant, uh, a system whereby you can anchor your plants so that they can remain upright. You can either use a sponge whereby you tie uh, your stem, then you attach it on this hole just to make sure that the plant, are, the plant is upright, then the roots are suspended in water. Then just to, or you can use uh, stones or the pumice. You just put your plant straight, then you put your pumice so that your plant can be upright. Then the roots are suspended in water. This is a jug containing water. 
then you assume there is water already filled in this place, then you suspend it, then you make sure that this place is filled with fully filled with water so that your plants can be suspended inside there. Then it is also very important to make sure that you can either lift this uh, uh, form a little bit high, high so that the roots can get oxygen or you can use oxygen pump uh, in different parts of this, uh, of this inside the water that the roots can get uh, enough oxygen to make them grow. Another one which is a uh, work in progress whereby we just put, we fill this place with uh, pumice. Then this is a suction pump or siphon pump whereby the water once it fills, it can be able to be sucked outside of, out, out of this place to the, an uh, outside tank that is there. What, you, what happened is that this is a full uh, circulatory system whereby water comes all the way from the fish tank through a certain pump pipe into the uh, growth bed containing the pumice and then on this pumice is where you plant your plants and then the water is applied then fill this place once it gets to a certain level it drains out then the water from the fish getting into this system will be able to supply nutrients enough for plant growth. In addition, the system also act as a filter of all those impurities, all the nitrogen that comes from the system. So that's how that once the water is coming out of this place, it acts like a biological filter, whereby the plant absorbs excess ammonia and nitrogen, such that once the water leaves this place, goes out to the tank, then that water circulates back to the fish when it's somehow clear or clean. My name is Arnold Opio. I'm an associate professor of horticulture here at Egerton University. So in the living lab, I'm involved in the crop production side. Now the Insight's project, Living Lab, is a project funded by the European Union. It is a collaboration between institutions in Europe and institutions in Africa. In Africa, we have eight living labs, a total of six countries. So we have Kenya, we have Sierra Leone, we have Ghana, Gabon, Cameroon, Nigeria, and of course, Kenya. So in Kenya we have two living labs, that is Egerton and Kenyatta University. In Nigeria we have two living labs, which is the Aglob and the University of Ibadan. In Europe we are partnering with Germany, Switzerland, Italy, whereas we also have from Asia we have Israel as partners in this project. Now the concept of the living lab is a circular economy. That's the basic concept that we have developed or which we are engaged in in this living lab. Where we have organic waste management, we have insect farming, we have fertilizer or feeds, then we have vegetables. And then of course for human beings you have a good diet of fish, and also of vegetables. So what is the whole concept? What is the whole idea? How was this uh, concept developed? One, the whole concept is based on the challenges which are encountered in the urban centers, where the populations in the urban centers may be having challenges in getting fresh food, which is nutritious. For us in Kenya, we learned the hard way during the problem of COVID, a lot of people in the urban centers or in the towns had challenges getting fresh food, especially when there was the lockdown and there was no movement. So people in urban areas had challenges in getting fresh vegetables. So this concept is looking at where within a very small area, a family can actually be able to raise their own fish they can grow their own vegetables and at the same time they are able to manage waste.
In the urban areas at the household level, we do generate waste and we are all aware that in the urban areas we face challenges in waste management. So in our living lab at Edgerton, we are focusing on waste management. We are also focusing on rearing fish and then cultivation of vegetables. So looking at this, the aspect of the organic waste, the waste from the kitchen, be it fruit waste, be it vegetable waste, can be fed to the black soldier fly. The black soldier fly is very good at breaking down and utilizing the waste. From the black soldier fly, the excreta from the black soldier fly gives us fertilizer. Now the excreta from the black soldier fly, which is our fertilizer, we are able to use it to grow our vegetables. The waste from the vegetables is actually what goes back as food waste and is fed to the black soldier fly. The maggots or the larvae from the black soldier fly serves as food for the fish. So the fish are able to get their food from the black soldier fly. The water from the fish is very rich in nutrients, especially nitrogen. And that water is pumped or is used to grow the vegetables. So the vegetables will be able to absorb the nitrogen, especially which is in the form of ammonia. It therefore purifies that water. And that water is collected in a tank and then it is pumped back to the fish. So we have a complete circular system where the water from the fish is used to irrigate the vegetables. The vegetable waste is used to, f to feed the black soldier fly. The excreta from the black soldier fly is used to grow the vegetables. The larvae from the black soldier fly serves as food for the fish. Now, it is not necessary or it is not mandatory that a farmer needs to adopt the entire system. The system can be broken up and a farmer can actually implement just part of it based on what the farmer can afford. For example, you may just find the farmer working with black soldier fly and the fish. Alternatively, the farmer may work with the fish water to irrigate the vegetables. So it is not mandatory that you have to adopt the entire system. As the farmer learns, gets more experiences, and as the farmer gets to improve on the economic status, then the farmer can adopt um, this particular system. So at Egerton University, the living lab serves as a demonstration where farmers can come um, and learn from us what we have done so far. Uh, apart from that, we also get cases whereby um, <coughs> we do carry out training for farmers who are interested in adopting this technology. We also have, occasionally we have students who come visiting, so we are open to visitors who are willing to come and learn, or farmers who might want to adopt the technology. Uh, we also offer opportunities for students who may want to carry out their attachment. These are middle level college students who may want to carry out their attachment at Egerton. They, they are free to come and see or even be attached to the living. My, my name is Paul Kahenya. I'm the communication officer of this uh, Insights uh, Food Project here at Egerton University. And uh, this project, we have seen a uh, number of farmers adapting this uh, technology. Currently, we have 10 farmers who, who are already uh, taking part in this uh, project. And uh, we have seen that already they have installed this in their, in their homes and uh, they are doing quite well. And we have quite a number of them that have already uh, seen the, the first and the second harvest. And uh, more farmers are still coming up, uh, want to join us, they want to be onboarded into this project, they want to uh, adopt this system into their farms. And more so, we are encouraging more urban farmers to come and adopt this. And uh, it's something that is really, really uh, doing really well in Nakuru City. And uh, farmers are really reaping uh, quite a lot in terms of uh, production, in terms of also uh, resources because they are using the rockery available materials to come up with this system and uh, we have seen quite a lot of uh, a lot of uh, production when it comes to them producing as compared to what they have been doing 
Uh, we have other farmers from Baringo, we have other farmers from Nyamira, we have other farmers in the western part of Kenya who have already shown interest in adapting this system. And uh, we did our training here in January and uh, we invited quite a number of them who came from different parts of Kenya and they are really ready to adopt this system. Uh, the project uh, will end in uh, 2026 but that does not mean that the project will completely end. That's the, 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 the funding. We are supposed to come up with sustainability measures to make sure that the project goes beyond that. Uh, the, the project started in uh, 2023, uh, January, and uh, this is now our, our, our third year. And uh, we, we still have a lot to do, and uh, we really uh, have uh, uh, indicators that we need to achieve. And But before that, we are really uh, trying to see if the community will really adapt to this system. Uh, what I can tell them is that uh, they really need to come and see what we are doing here. They really need to come and adapt these uh, modern uh, farming techniques uh, because uh, we are facing a lot of uh, challenges when it comes to climate change, the type of soil that we have, but we are now bringing these uh, new farming techniques where we are using the soilers. Let them come and see how they can grow foods, how they can sustain their, their families, how they can push towards uh, economic sustainability when they see the type of technology that we have.